Also, by the way, can I just really quickly show these? Oh my god, with what with my blue feet. Da, 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 da. Blue, they're amazing. Well, you're my well. nice English feet. Where are these from? Is that? Stella McCartney. I actually bought them for my birthday for a disco party. I should wear them more often, but I, like them a lot. I think I'd probably um, fall down on the tube. But yeah, I love your haircut, it's so cute. I don't know what to do with it though, so I don't even know what it looks like on the camera, but that's fine. You know what's quite funny is I did, so my boyfriend's American, and um, <laughs> I, weird. I took him to a pantomime and I suddenly realised how many weird things there were in England. I was like, don't worry, it's just like Amanda dressed up as a woman. And then like, there's a woman as a man, she slaps her thigh a lot. And he was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I was like, everyone gets beaten up. <laughs> it's such a weird thing, isn't it? Oh, man. And the English anyway, does. I digress, I digress. Okay, so me and Jade McSorley uh, met 10 years ago. Yes. On her 21st birthday, or not on her 21st birthday, actually in Britain's Next Top Model. We're in a house yeah. for two months together. That was yeah, a traumatising that, experience. That was intense, I think. Okay, I know, people ask me about it and it's honestly, that one's just slightly blocked. I'm like, I don't really remember. No. I don't either. I remember just hanging out with the camera guys a lot. And we ate Thai work. food with the camera guys. Yeah. I remember always ordering Thai food and drinking wine with the cameraman. I remember there being a lot of sugar on show, like a lot of yeah, sugar to, to eat keep you going. and a lot of alcohol. Mm -hmm. To keep you fighting. Um, yeah, and it kind of... I wasn't really involved in that, I, so... I was. <laughs> <laughs> you were, you were, you were, but you were great, like, I, I thought I was going to get kicked out in the second episode because I was so boring sitting in my room by myself. No! <laughs> but, um, do you know what though, actually it was really weird that in, out of that show, I really do remember we did one shoot in Iceland yeah. on the Blue Lagoon and that's something even now, because I know the top model shoots can be so weird. And you know what I mean? Just a little strange, but I really thought that one was like an insane moment. Yeah, I know. I really did get. When you do look back on it, people always ask whether like they think whether I, I'm glad that I did it. Yeah. And I I am actually really glad because yeah. we did have such many like amazing experiences. And you've had an absolutely fantastic career post. Well, yeah. I would never ever. I don't think <laughs> been modelling had I not been in that show. I Where would you have gone? Well, I'd probably be, I don't know, I mean, I'd hope that I would have moved to London and been a fashion journalist, but it, Middlesbrough, I love where, I'm, I'm really proud of where I come from, but it's not exactly like the place where people go to seek, you know, yeah, models yeah. or talent. It's, it's yeah. really like, and I feel like it should be because there's so many amazing people from there that I know, mm. but yeah, I would never have started modelling. I don't think anybody scouts in Middlesbrough. Isn't that crazy? So actually, one of my questions, how you got into modelling, that would have been, did you apply for Britain's Next or did somebody apply for you? My nan, kind of. Did she? Oh, yeah, did she, she really? She to do it. I know, yeah, I, know, I, like, I owe a lot to her actually oh, for doing that. Oh, sorry. She, she gave me the, the confidence to do it. Um, yeah, I don't think I would if, if, you know. No, I understand. And then post, you joined Models 1. I did. Yep, yep, yep. And now you're at? Established. Established Models. And what is, <laughs> I love, it's a weird question, but have you ever been to any super strange castings? Is there one that stands out? Super strange castings? For example, as a little uh, back, I went to one a while ago where there were four models, it was four models at a time, and they put us all in a fake rowing boat, so like just sat on the floor basically. And we had to mime that we were falling out of the rowing boat. Oh, I like, you know when you're like looking back now and being a bit older and a bit more together and know yourself a bit more, I was like, they were having a laugh. Like those casting people were just like, you know what, this is really boring. Like what can I get these girls to do? I've done so many of those. Really? So many. And I feel like if you hunted out all my reels of like casting, like the casting reels, it would make like a really like good blooper. Yeah. Because... Oh, there was one where I was sat, they were like, oh, you're on a roller coaster and you have to be like screaming and going up and down. So we're going to give you this, you know, the big um, gym balls? Gym? Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, big yeah, gym yeah, ball yeah. thing. You just sit on them. Sit on it and be like, woo! <laughs> Stop. Gym. Do you remember what that was for? And I've also just done it again. So <laughs> 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 I do not, I think it was for like... Um, I 
I actually think it's for like a furniture like commercial or something. Like, they're doing it for a laugh. They have to be. I know. And they then I'll always like, like call my book and like, why? Why do you do this? <laughs> do you know what? And they always think I used to dance like, you know, yeah. can you remember I used to yeah, dance before? Yeah, yeah. And then um, they still think I dance. And like, this was like before modelling. So we're going back a bit. This, this so over a decade so now. Everybody, so everybody, so every time they get like a, a briefing that's for a dancer, they're like, yeah, Jay can do it, Jay can do it. And I turned up to one and they weren't professional dancers and they were like, can you just dance for us? And I was like, like a routine? They're like, yeah, yeah. So I was like, well, I'm here now. So oh, that is mortifying. I got one once and they were like, can you skateboard? My booker actually rolled me and I was like, yeah, yeah, I can skateboard. And then I went to the casting because they like narrowed it down to the final to skateboard and it was like, I've never touched a skateboard like no, <laughs> no. They were like, you can't, can you? And I was like, mm, no. <laughs> just, just say yes. Just say just yeah. Just say yes. <laughs> and what in your, what has been, has there any been like a moment? Like you've been on set or you booked a job or any, just something that stands out as just like, oh my God, this is my life and this really happened and this is amazing right now. I mean, I know there must Why? be so many, but I don't know, just... Yeah, I mean, there has been a lot of times when I've just had to really take stock and just really centre myself and think, you know, I, I think there's always like this worry of the future and, you know, how long it's going to carry on. And yeah. sometimes you do have to just be like, look where I am, this is amazing. Even if you're just in like a really nice studio and getting yeah. a lovely breakfast and people have been really nice and kind to you, I think that's really important. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I don't... Oh, or you know, like, I don't so know if like Fraser, your book has ever wronged you and it was just that one job that you were like, oh, I really, like, that was awesome. Ace, I mean, I, I know this girl did ASOS for all. That's an amazing one. Yeah, I did ASOS so for like, like four a good years. Continuous. Oh my yeah. gosh, four years. <laughs> yeah, on and off for four years. Oh yeah, yeah. Amazing. Um, that was a really nice one because actually I built up like really lovely friends and I, I, mm. that was like, I can't believe I'm getting paid to like hang out with my yeah. friends and dress up. Like, yeah, exactly. Um, all day, but you know that. W yeah, that was that was really nice working for those guys. I think when I'm in somewhere, I love traveling. So anywhere mm. that I'm suddenly surrounded by like nature or in, you know, I'm like I can't believe I get to like, yeah, you know, even even Dubai. I know we were talking about it was. Oh yeah, I just walked in actually. These guys were nattering her and right. Uh, yeah, quite odd, but like... What happened there? I was in like, you know, this full-on like Versace outfit in the middle of the desert, like the desert in Dubai. And it was ridiculously hot. Mm. And I was like, yeah, I, I mean, I probably, I didn't feel like I looked that good. But, <laughs> you know, I'm just thinking, That's but actually, this is actually really cool, like... Well, it's this not a desk like, job, is it? Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm sprawled on a rock in Gucci, oh you God. know, and it's like, it's, this is so, it was for a magazine. Um, Amazing. Yeah, it was an editorial, but I felt like, you know, kind of a bit of a Bowie, like, you know, man from Mars, you know, coming Yay. down, like, yeah. like, this like, is my life. Yeah. It was, it's it, not the tunes, sorry, <laughs> copyrighted, <laughs> so that's why we're going that way. But you know, it just was so many like surreal things all mashed together. Yeah. Um, and as well, like, and then you have like the evidence to prove it because you have this like amazing picture at the end of it. Uh, so. Do you have any frames? No. Does your mum? No. <laughs> no, she doesn't. Oh my god, that's awful. Oh, it's my nan has one. I did. Top models <laughs> of all the. Let's <laughs> She says that my mum has one up and it's from Top Model. It was that Faith Shoe campaign. What? That's the same one. And it's like really a terrible, terrible photo. I'm like, should we change this? And yeah. no, okay, you like that's cool. I know. No, I want. Oh, I mean, maybe in so years to come, I, I will. But I don't think I can do that quite now. No, no, no yeah. Yeah. And when, um, so I think it's always, I mean, it's important, like, obviously, loads of people want to get into the industry. Um, it's a very popular industry, it's a tough industry. But do you have any advice or any advice people are giving you to people that are trying to? Um, I mean, I can only go based on my experience. And mm. obviously I started later than most girls that yeah. start modelling. Like I was 21. Um, but I, I, do, I do 
worry sometimes about girls getting into the industry a bit too early. Yeah. Because um, I think you just have to have really a strong sense of who you are. Not necessarily exactly who you are, but just knowing your boundaries and your limits mm -hmm. and what is acceptable and what is not. And I think, you know, there's often been times when I've suggested things where looking back in hindsight, I probably, I probably wouldn't yeah. have, you know, working with certain so was all maybe showing certain bits of my flesh that I yeah I probably wouldn't I have done think, again yeah but also but I think it's it's really it's so interesting now with Instagram and social media like we didn't when we started we mm. we didn't really have that as much and I feel like the girls who are starting now at such a young age are exposed to everything like there are certain celebrities mm. that will show every you know it's so much more sexualized I think mm. the industry's got more sexualized I think yeah I think it has I think it's like <laughs> I think there's like positives and negatives mm. coming through at the moment because I feel like there's definitely more diversity in terms of like, you know, embracing who you are. Yeah. And I think that is brilliant. Um, but yeah, it's like, sometimes it's just so to the extreme yeah. that it's like, and it's like, who are you doing it for? Are you doing it for yourself? Or yeah. Are you doing it for life? Oh, is it the validation? And yeah. I think it's like this question of like, okay, what do you value? It's like value of a validation, I guess. Like, um, and I think you just have to be aware coming into it, especially mm. with social media, because you, now they've got more, con you've got more control of what you're putting out there, so. Yeah, that's true. Well, you can really define your image. That's actually really yeah. good point, like you saying you knew who you were. I honestly don't even think I figured out until a couple of years ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think, I'd be so hard getting it into a 15, but you can like choose your brand and there are loads of avenues you can go off on. I think, well, yeah, but I <laughs> think- waffling. <laughs> but I think with like, you know, I had a really good booker and he really defined my path and it was, he really, but he knew me. So yeah. he kind of like, I think that's really important as a model coming in to have like yeah. that good relationship with your booker and them to understand you. But I think, you know, it used to be just the booker that would control kind of, the way that you would lead as a model, like what box she might be fitting Yeah, exactly. When you're editorial. And Actually, something. this girl, she looks just like, let me reach for my phone. I know. I've always thought this. No, she's my background. Jean Shrimpton. Oh, do you think? Oh, oh come wish. on! You're literally like... I wish. You do! No, You've I always been... Care. my. I love the 60s and all that. And Jane I mean, was always like, bang on the 60s I'll girl. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, excitingly, um, you have obviously many strands and one of them is explain what you're kind of doing right now oh yeah so um i've went back to school um to do my masters in it's called fashion futures but it's it's basically it, it's looking at sustainability in the fashion industry so it's quite hard um, and it's london it's london college of fashion london college of fashion yeah so um they have a well, they have a Centre for Sustainable Fashion, which has been running for about 10 years, and they've had this course running. I think it's evolved over, over time, but um, yeah, it's, re it's really interesting. It's very, there's only 15 of us, actually, which is... Oh, wow. Yeah. Is that, but is that because that's the top, or that's just how many people signed up to the course? How many people signed up to the course? I think Gosh. it's still quite a... Yeah, a niche thing to be studying. However, obviously the the whole discussion about sustainability is growing. Yeah, um, but it needs to be because it is. Um, yeah, the the hard truths that you learn on this course is quite hard to swallow sometimes. And what made you pick that then? Was it something from being in the industry, or Jay's got an amazing fashion sense? I love her clothes, and there's always actually you want. I love, like, yeah. Like, is that yeah. where that kind of stemmed yeah. from? Like, how did you choose that as a Yeah, focus? I, it, well, it definitely, it, it definitely came from my time in the industry. Yeah. I, um, I think, like, I love clothes, like, I love fashion. However, it was getting very, I was being very aware of the industry not working the way it should be in yeah. harmony with the environment and, and I felt like, you know, we started when e-com just came around, yeah. you know, like yeah, e-commerce like online. Oh my God, we found old. Yeah, <laughs> and, you know, the, it, the pace of it, 
like I would wear like 20 outfits a day and then suddenly yeah. it was 40 outfits a day with two models in a studio um, and then you know I'd go to shoot in Tokyo and it'd be 100 outfits a day and oh I'm just like God. there's so much stuff like who is wearing this and and for how long are they wearing it because it's it's really cheap as well so I just I felt like the Throw model fashion yeah and I just I feel like the model was broken and I thought if if I want to carry on in this industry then I need to find a way that I can that sits with me comfortably yeah <laughs> to do that but it's interesting you say that because also not only as e-commerce came so did obviously we were talking about Instagram earlier. So did Instagram, yeah. and then then what happens on that? You wear you wear the same outfit. I mean, not to sound I don't mean to sound like, but you every outfit of these pictures of these younger girls are different, different, different. Like where does that all what, go? I mean, so it's, that's kind of a snowballing movement in itself. Well, the thing is, it's like you, we all know that you know you get um, the Instagram influencer or oh, models get things given yeah you know to wear and to promote and they'll wear it once maybe uh, and then so know, what I don't the know if they actually a bunch of my friends who are influencers they'll do like a mini you know because you realize when you do a spring clean you just have stuff and there's so much stuff that you have only worn once or twice and I know a lot of people are um you know reselling or like Depop or these things yeah. that you can get online maybe well actually me me and my friend she's my one of my old bookers where we're looking to, through um, my course with the uni, we're looking to start a peer-to-peer -peer rental. Oh my god, so what would that mean? It would be like a, it's like, I don't know, like the Airbnb of fashion. So, but, ah. so we, you know, you could rent the unworn clothes in your wardrobe to people for a little, like a short amount of time and then get it back. And then... Ah. Now really that's good. a cool yeah, idea. Yeah, so it's you know what? Have you loan. kind of rent the runway? Yeah, so we're looking at that, but not as a business model. Yeah, but we're not. I mean, rent the runway is brilliant, but we don't want to hold the stock, and we don't want um, it just to be designer. That's genius. You know, we want it to so be. So you would. It's a bit like eBay. Then you could post it, and then they would and then you post could, it back, or yeah, and then you, oh, it could oh be peer God. to peer. More commu We're going to try and start more community, so you know, like. Um, so that you can collect and try and reduce carbon footprint, but you, I'll use bicycles, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so it's a whole way of life as well. Yeah. So because I've got, I, even I've got so much stuff in my wardrobe, and I just think, and, and if I wanted to buy something that was a little bit more expensive, you couldn't potentially make that money back by just renting it out and yeah. getting more cost per wear. So it it kind of benefits everybody. Um, so yeah, it's called it's gonna it's called Lonehood. That's so amazing. There. So forgive my ignorance. Going into so going into um, the masters, mm -hmm. I just for some reason when you were talking about it earlier, just automatically assumed it was to like start designing and then. But oh. no, so it's more. It's actually a course that's like. Yeah, I don't come from a design background. Yeah, you know, like I, I, know. I, I, I just don't know why my brain was just like, oh, you know, learn about right. No, but actually, I was a bit worried about that because I really thought. Um, because I don't have a design background, I'm going to really struggle. Yeah. But actually, because of sustainability being such a massive issue, the whole thing about the whole role of designer and also a modern and also influencer is like changing so much because mm. now a designer used to design, you know, I mean, this is obviously very basic, but they make a design yeah. and then they would find out how to make that happen. Yeah. But now they have all these kind of things that you they have to think about about the impact on the environment and workers' rights. So they have to think about that and then design. And that. you do think so designers are actively doing that? <sighs> it's changing. Mm, there's room for progress, I think. Yeah. But the, just the role of the designer is is really yeah, it is really, really changing. But I think you have to I mean, I'm not a designer, so I can't, it's yeah, hard no, for me, it's a but I think they have to really take that on and w want to do it, like, but there is people that are doing it, you know, like Mother of Pearl, she's amazing, Amy, um, well, I did a, my little tiny bit of research before this, and um, I hadn't realised that the fashion industry is, I think I wrote it down somewhere, like, the number two, um, l what is that word, why did I write it, like, 
harm of the environment. There you go, fashion industry second largest after oil. That's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but you know. So, uh, yeah, th I mean, there's been so many studies and there's so many facts that are thrown around, it's hard for me to even keep on top of it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, apparently the fashion industry is responsible for maritime and air oh combined, yeah. for, um, affecting with increasing carbon emissions. So, what can we do? What uh, can little old so for, like, blah, blah? Because a lot of the time you don't even think about it, but you have to realise, like, if you're going to the cheaper shops, you know what I mean? And if you're buying something that's a pound or two pound, it's probably not going to be coming from the best workers' rights. And it's probably not. And it's tough because things are expensive and, you know, whatever. But what can we do to kind of, I don't know, in small ways, I guess, you know, little baby steps? I think uh, wear things more than once. Don't mm -hmm. be worried about just because you've posted it on an Instagram post that you can never be out of scene again. In yeah. that. I mean, that's just so... I mean that's one wear vintage look mm -hmm. look to your friend's wardrobe look to your parents trendy. like if you did it a bit like yours but on a smaller if you just had some mates around you just did like yeah. a little clothing swap I used to do that with the friends with the friends okay. I <laughs> love hunting my friends wardrobes yeah me too they've got like so a much better thing. You're style like, oh. than me and I'm oh, always like oh can I borrow this <laughs> um, yeah do that you know instead of like you know, I think it, it, with Instagram, like, people look at girls' tastes and they're like, oh, gosh, mm. she looks so great. I wish I could dress like her. Well, try and find ways of doing that. Oh, like, you know point. what I mean? Like, you know, if you see your friend wearing something that's amazing, why not ask to borrow it if you really love it and you're going to a, a, an event? Um, and what designers, like, um, it's kind of a weird question, but, like, off the top of your head, do you know which ones are more sustainable? Like, which ones kind of do practice it a little bit more? So there's... To be safe to buy from. Uh, Mother of Pearl is... Do I know Mother of Pearl? Am I yeah, well, she made these t-shirts, oh, but nice. she also makes um, amazing dresses. I actually oh, think cool. she's... I mean, in my opinion, like, makes sustainable just, like, cool and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But beautiful at the same time, so... Um, so she's great. Um, there's Phoebe English, who's very, you know, she really looks at her model. Obviously, S Stella McCartney is, you know, quite a pioneer for mm -hmm. uh, sustainability. And she does a lot of them um, looking at how to make m materials as well, like new materials. So oh, she makes wow. like leather made from mushrooms. She's pr made her own viscose from. Um, That's like, incredible. From this forest, I mean, you'd probably have to look into it more. Actually, my friend, shout out to her, she does a line, it's called Artifact 8, and they've basically figured out, it's all vegan, but they've replicated, um, like, alligator or snake skin, um, like, little bags, but all vegan, 100%. Mm. And the industry yeah. stopped fur as well. Yeah, exactly. Is that our movement? It is Although, kind of... I have my oh, thingy no. with, with faux fur. Really? It's all plastic, isn't it? Oh, oh gosh. Somewhere. See, I was making <laughs> this, this is the thing, sometimes like when I'm talking about sustainability, I feel like I'm dealing with Brexit. Like there's no like, you know, what's the outcome? It just what's, keeps on going. What's the thing? You solve one thing and something else, but I just, you know, just doing your little bit for, um, I mean, Emma does loads of stuff. Yeah, 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 she, yeah, exactly. She's brilliant. She's I think more advocate. people are moving that way for sure I think as a society everyone's just becoming way more conscious of a bunch of things and kind of where this is coming from but it's weird as well because like obviously Instagram going back to Instagram I don't want to keep going back to it but like now oh. everyone can have a brand so actually like before when you would hand make something to pay for all the marketing and everything and blah 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 your product would be so expensive but now when you cut out that cost even though you know Instagram can be throwaway it's also giving people yeah, you, you know, have you to see the positives. More, yeah. yeah, you have to see the positives in it. And I think it's really easy to shut things like that down because so it, social media does like cause like a lot of anxiety and a lot of social mm. pressures and expectations. Mm. But on another note, it can be a really positive, positive useful tool that you just need to um, make that choice. So, last one, Miss Dave McSorley. Who do you follow on Instagram? Oh, 
Maybe maybe there's a little uh, doggy down here that's <laughs> been here the whole time. Little what's it, Paddington? Yeah, a dog Paddington. named Paddington. Great account. I follow that one. Is that it? Uh, um, a dog named that's Paddington. That's it. A dog named Paddington. <laughs> Grace is going to love that. <laughs> Shut up, <pose. laughs> Dogs of Instagram. Um, but I do actually follow um, Grumpy Griffins. Okay. Don't which is just one. about Brussels Griffins dogs, which, have you not seen them? <laughs> they look, I don't know what it looks like. They look like... Um, Insert dog. Like Ewoks or like, you know, Labyrinth, the movie Labyrinth. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. With like Ludo, they're like... The, the hairless. Big, the big um, monster. They're so ugly, but so okay, cute. Yeah. I love them. That's um, a good one. And for fashion wise? Oh, fashion wise. I mean, I follow Fashion Revolution. That's mm-hmm. really good for facts on sustainability in fashion. Um, who else do I follow? That sounds pretty good to me. Got a few ones to catch up on? Guys, I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, there he goes. He's on it. All right, my lovely. Thank you so, so much for chatting. It's been lovely to catch up with you.